This week, WPA keeps trying to be secure. Your cloud is vulnerable. Blue screens for AMD, and if you own an Apple device, apply some updates before someone else owns your device. Doug White from our Secure Digital Life program and Roger Williams University joins us for expert commentary, commentary even, on meltdowns and the specter. So stay tuned for this episode of Hack Naked News. This is Security Weekly, for security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show that brings you the security news each week. And despite popular belief, we do wear pants. It's Hack Naked News. Most of the organizations I work with, they have released. Yes, you read it. Actually, do the original Linux kernel secure with Linux. So I hope everybody has their resistance built up. Brought to you by. Do you have a website, an external presence, employees, an office? Any of these things can be compromised and attacked. How are you defending these assets? Have you penetration tested these public assets? Start 2017 by taking a proactive approach to securing your vulnerable areas. Black Hills Information Security has been helping companies find their weaknesses since 2008. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com and see how they can help you sleep better at night. Welcome everyone to Hack Naked News. This is episode 156 for Tuesday, January 9th. 2018, I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined by Smelly Pirate Hooker, Dr. Doug White. Doug will be joining us later in the program to uh, talk about some Meltdown and Spectre, of course, which was all over the news. First, a couple of quick announcements. Check out our on-demand material. Previously recorded webcasts are available on command, on command and on demand at securityweekly.com forward slash on demand. Make sure you go check those out because they're awesome. I promise. <laughs> yes. And <coughs> what is so funny? And now <laughs> the security news with WPA3 Wi-Fi will be secure this time. Really, wireless bods promise the Wi-Fi Alliance. Monday announced the arrival of WPA3 as the successor to WPA2. The flawed but widely used network security protocol for Wi-Fi communication today, in case you didn't know, WPA2 has some security issues as it allows anyone within range to boot people off a Wi-Fi network with a DOS attack. And then, of course, there's Kraken. WPA3 certified devices should start appearing later this year. They will include features like improved protection when users choose weak passwords and improved security setup on devices with limited or no interface screens. WPA3 will introduce some new encryption techniques, including opportunistic wireless encryption, or OWE. More to follow as details become available on that story. Critical unpatched flaws disclosed in Western Digital My Cloud storage devices. Security researchers have discovered several, vulner several severe vulnerabilities and a secret hard-coded backdoor in Western Digital's My Cloud NAS device that could allow remote attackers to gain unrestricted root access to the device. My Cloud devices create a private cloud which means really remote access to your files that live within your home network. In addition to a remote file upload vulnerability in a PHP script, yep, I just said that, researchers also found the existence of a classic backdoor with admin username mydlinkbri, well, it's in the, in the notes anyway, in the password of abc12345cba. The, the CBA is very important there to have a secure password. Well, those pa that password is hard-coded into the binary and cannot be changed. Other vulnerabilities include a CSRF and command injection. Now get this, upgrading to firmware version 2.30.174 may fix some of the issues. However, researchers have not tested these resolutions and some users are reporting some of the vulnerabilities still remain. Bad docs and blue screens make Microsoft uh, to suspend the Spectre patch for AMD machines. Microsoft has suspended the delivery of the latest Windows updates to certain systems with AMD processors after reports that the update was causing machines to crash with the infamous blue screen of death when booting. The update contains countermeasures against both Meltdown and Spectre attacks. Although AMD systems are not affected by Meltdown, they're vulnerable to Spectre. Apparently, some issues were found in the documentation for AMD chips, according to Microsoft, which led to the issues. Pass the buck, anyone? 
Until your antivirus system adds the re this registry key, you're not going to get any more Windows updates. Microsoft has said that customers who are running certain antivirus products will not receive its bundle of the January 2018 security patches, which include, because I haven't said it enough, mitigations against Spectre and Meltdown CPU flaws, unless their products are certified that they don't make unsupported calls into the Windows kernel memory. For an updated list of all antivirus products that have added such support, you can visit the link in the show notes at wiki.securityweekly.com. Apple has released multiple security updates. If you own any Apple devices, you will likely be applying updates. Well, that is if you listen to this show. Uh, US CERT has encouraged users and administrators to review Apple security pages for the following products and apply necessary updates to macOS High Sierra 10.13.2, OS 10 El Capitan 10.11.6, and macOS Sierra 10.12.6, iPhone 5S and later, iPad Air and later, iPad Touch 6th generation. So pretty much if you own an Apple product, you're likely going to be doing some updates. We're going to take a short break and come back with Dr. Doug White. So stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by IT Pro TV, binge-worthy learning for IT teams. Why is it binge-worthy? It's learning presented in an engaging and entertaining talk show format that beats voiceover PowerPoint snooze fests. IT Pro TV offers an on-demand course library with more than 3,300 hours of content. Watch on your desktop, on the go, or in the comfort of your own living room. IT Pro TV is IT training you and your team actually want to watch which means a better return on your learning investment. Get started with IT Pro TV for Teams with a special offer for Security Weekly listeners. Visit itpro.tv forward slash Security Weekly to start a seven-day free trial and get 30% off a standard or premium IT Pro TV membership using the code SECWEEKLY30. Welcome back, everyone. That was a really weird commercial. IT Pro, uh, however, is not that weird, although... Don Pizet, he, we might call him a little weird, but in a good way. Uh, we love all the folks at ITPro.tv. Make sure you go there to get your on-demand training uh, as it's awesome. And I know you hear us talk about it a lot, and that's okay. The reason we do is because they're awesome, and you should go check them out. We use them here at Security Weekly, and you'll be hearing more <coughs> about our experiences on upcoming programs, which will be a lot of fun. And now, from his home on Whore Island, Dr. Doug White. <laughs> <laughs> my home okay yeah <laughs> you're in <laughs> if it's on the prompter burgundy reads the prompter. <laughs> yeah. it was on my it. prompter it was on the it is on the prompter That's right. yeah, it, it says that i live on horror island <laughs> hi honey welcome um, <laughs> hi mom and dad <laughs> welcome back to horror well, island welcome to the news we're being in, in, invaded uh but we had a lot of fun with the anchorman uh references because it's it's so awesome but uh, we're going <clears> to <throat> talk about um, some, uh, well, somewhat of like Meltdown Inspector style yeah. kind of attacks. I know we've we've covered some uh, of these attacks on previous uh, episodes of Paul Security Weekly. We're going to talk about it again this week. We're going to have a, another expert come on and talk about them because, well, it's a big deal. But Doug, you put together some uh, information on some AMD security yeah. flaws, which are not Meltdown Inspector. No, they're okay. not. So yeah, so this is what this is why I did this because I was I was starting to read about Meltdown Inspector. And when I started reading about Meltdown Inspector, I immediately thought, I'll be smug because I have AMD. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like oh, yeah, I told you that Intel stuff was going to come back to haunt you. I told you, I told you, and I told you. <laughs> but you didn't listen, did you? But then I, I, I found out that uh, the Google Cloud security team, at the same time they were finding all these other things, they also found, guess what? AMD has inherent hardware flaws as well. So I, I immediately jumped on that and, and I thought I would talk about that a little bit because there is some about Meltdown Inspector. So I thought I would, I would talk a little mm. bit about uh, this, uh, this flaw in the trusted process module on AMD. And, and to preface that, I, I wanted to say that, that I think some of this comes about because I, I used to have this friend named Leo and Leo's hobby was building nuclear reactors. I mean, I mean, I mean not not kidding. He actually hmm. built. He he was like one of the. the you told me about Leo before. Yeah. yeah, he was one of the pioneers of like nuclear reactors, and he he built one in his basement with another guy, and they just theorized it. They went and got some books on you know like physics, and they built huh. them. But the reason I, I bring up Leo is because Leo didn't really conceptualize security. 
I mean, not in that sense. He, he conceptualized security in the World War II sense. Like, I don't want a bomb to hit this. I'm going to build a big concrete bunker around it. Okay. But he didn't think, I mean, he didn't think about what, when somebody comes up and sticks an ice pick in it, he, I mean, to him, that's just like, why on earth would you do such a thing? And it, 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 he didn't conceptualize. So a lot of the old time engineers who are doing architecture design, the whole idea of that was, was very simple. Make it work. I mean, I mean when, when I was working in programming and things, we did not talk about security. We talked about how much time it would take to get this working. I have a quick example. When you design a hammer, you design it to bang nails in, right. pull nails out. You don't design it to prevent a crazy person from whacking people in the head with it. Right. right. I, mean, That's what I mean, so yep. whacking people off is always a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Unless that, you're in the Sopranos that didn't TV come out series right. or is that on the slide? mafia yeah. movie. It's not on the teleprompter. <laughs> Doug, this is unscripted now. Uh, so yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm reading. They wrote it. I just read what they tell me to. So that's a, any all blame is somewhere. But but anyway, I, I thought of Leo because because that really did to me sort of epitomize the because this is architecture problem now. This is no longer just a bad coding thing. This is an architecture problem in the hardware itself. So we're no longer talking about, about you know, just the programmer made a mistake or the programmer left a hole. I mean, they did, but, but it's in, built in the architecture. And I think that a lot of these architectures just kind of evolved, and it was about compressing everything, making it work, making it as small as possible, as cool as possible, and not letting it get out of control. And that is where some of this kind of flaw stuff starts to develop. So the AMT flaw uh, is very similar to Meltdown Spectre-type flaws, and essentially, this is in the trusted processing module of AMD. So uh, when people started to evolve hardware, they realized that since the CPU has access to everything, so this API that is the CPU is processing all the applications in the system, they needed another API that was going to be a sort of secured area. And not only was it a secured area, they wanted to actually trust individual things. And the best analogy I come up with for this is HTTPS and HTTP on a web page. So you go to a web page and there's all this untrusted stuff, content, and then there's these boxes that are HTTPS that are encrypted so that you can type things in there and they get sent back and forth with, uh, with certificates. And that's essentially what the trusted processing module piece of this whole thing does. So there's all these boxes sitting there uh, that are in the trusted processing module, and each box can be accessed by a certificate. So that means I can set up a function in my code that will just access that one thing. So maybe I process my password there, I process my certificates there, I process my keys, whatever it is that you want to put in the trusted processing module. And in theory, we, we trust it, just like we trust WPA2. Mm -hmm. And now we trust WPA3. I mean, that was the, the lead story, was we're now going to trust WPA3. And later when we're talking about WPA4, mm -hmm. uh-huh, it keeps us in business, but so so what what happened was they were they explored this statically, and what that means is that the Google Cloud security people were actually looking at the source code for these things. So they they were not trying things and seeing what happened. They literally took the source code and, and looked at it in in the stack, and what they found out was that in the stack there was the possibility of a stack overflow. So it, it, I know that everybody watching usually knows all these things, but if you want to think about a stack overflow, uh, it means that I got a box here and I got a box here. I'm going to put something in this box that's bigger than the box, and now it sticks over into that part of the box. You know, kind of a glory hole sort of, yeah, that's, we know, that's bad image, bad image, okay. <laughs> no, eh, eh. And we'll, we'll, we'll do that over Explain later. Explain stack overflows in the concept of toasters, Doug. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I'm out. Yeah, I, toasters. <laughs> I was going to use sex toys, but okay. Okay, so there's a Stack Overflow. <laughs> so, the, yeah, and, and I mean, okay. so, so that kind of linked list problem is just literally where I, you know, and all of you know how to do Stack Overflows, I'm sure, but you embed another direction at the end of your code that sticks out of the box into the other box, and then that redirect sends the code off on some new path. And, and essentially what this does is it allows you, just like every other buffer overflow or stack overflow that you've ever seen or heard or done yourself, it basically allows remote code execution of something else. And this whole thing was actually in this thing called EK check current cert. So this was a particular appy function inside the trusted process module, which now I guess will have to be called the UPM or something for the untrusted, untrusted process, process, yeah. process module. And basically what happened with it was essentially that 
it could execute code, just like Spectre Meltdown kind of problems, mm -hmm. in that so somebody could push something new out into the world. So they went on and they started looking for all these different things. So there are things that you would expect. This is why when I started thinking about Leo, because the first one I saw was the ASLR. And ASLR is essentially um, one way that, that people take advantage of memory space is by knowing where things are. And in the old days in Microsoft, they used to put the password, like the admin password was written on the hard drive in plain text. So this is an old forensics trick from Windows 98. Look at the raw hard drive and right there is the password login and everything. And you don't need to crack anything or do anything else. You can just see it in the raw disk space. And ASLR uh, was a way to randomize the stack space and memory space in and, and general so that things don't appear at the same address every time. Because if you're doing stack overflows, as you well know, the end of your... Uh, linked list needs to redirect to the place you want something to go. So if you want to put something in memory, you have to know where it's going to be. And if you don't, then it just kind of ran. It may crash the system, but you can't actually execute code if you don't know how to get to the beginning of that code. So ASLR uh, is a way to prevent that from happening. And so they, on the firmware on the chip, yeah, didn't have ASLR. Uh, it also didn't have the NX bit, right? Which it says like just use this space for storage, not to like actually execute things, right? Right. And so, wait, that wasn't there. And then the Canary stack? What is the Canary? Oh, oh like, the, the Canary. The, the yeah, can I've heard of this before. Yeah, the Canary is, and, and they, they can't, the name refers to the fact that miners supposedly mm -hmm. used to have Canaries in mines, and if the Canary died, probably you're going to die too. So I guess you could at least watch a small bird die before you collapsed or whatever. I never did get that. I didn't get that either, but yeah. That, well, apparently Canaries are more susceptible to poison gas than humans, and they die quicker. So gotcha. when the Canary dies, you time run, to run. Yeah, right. and, you know, so, or sit down and light a match or something. But... The, the canary is uh, also called a cookie, and what it does is it puts defined limits on either end of this thing. So it's almost like a key, and so if on the beginning and the end of your executable, you have a canary, mm -hmm. if something redirects out of that on the back end, guess what happens? The canary fails. And the CPU says, I don't think so. We're not going to execute that. Gotcha. And it can set a flag bit on it and say, no, thanks. That, that wasn't in this firmware either on the chip. It was the, not. The so all yeah. these three things that, and this is why I started thinking about Leo, because Leo did not think about global security design mm -hmm. when he was building his reactor core. He just thought about how do I get something that takes radioactive fuel and produces output? I'm not going to pretend that people may come in and stick ice picks in it. I'm not going to pretend that something weird is going to happen because why would anyone do that? And I think a lot of the architecture is like that too. I mean, these are things they could have put in the architecture, but they didn't. Why? Because they didn't think about it. They didn't think, oh, people are going to be doing this. And, and all this leads back around to, one, we often neglected security altogether. So it was just completely not even considered. It was like, make it work. Who cares? Secondly, it, it's security through obscurity problems in the sense that we... When we moved from we may need security, we moved into the nerds kind of world, you know, of, of, you know, nobody will know how to do this. It's esoteric to the modern world where you can go to a wiki page that tells you how to do it. And mm. it becomes something that, you know, a 12-year-old kid in Guangdong can actually execute. And all of a sudden, then it becomes a giant problem, not to mention nation states and all those kind of icky bits that are out there running around. My, my final question for you, Doug, is where did Leo get plutonium? Was it Lebanese? What the was it in Back to the Future? Was it Lebanese terrorist? No. What, where Libyan. 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 Libyan terrorist. terrorist. Yeah, no, he he no. just <laughs> he just went on the web, the yellow cake uranium website. Uh, and, and yes, actually, the dark no, web. Actually, yeah. this is See, what happened. Doc Brown would just go on the dark web today well, and get some plutonium. This guy yeah. was Doc Brown in real life, and yeah. and and what he did instead of what Doc Brown did was call Libyan terrorists. He actually him and the, the other guy that built this thing loaded it up in a truck, and 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 drove it down to a government lab mm -hmm. that was a secret, and they showed up and asked if they could purchase fuel for it. And they kind of got grabbed. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but they ended up working there for the next 40 years and building uh, nuclear reactors, and they built all kinds of cool stuff. Under their own free will? or like mm, No, they pretty much had these robot overlords that were yeah. sort of standing there with these electronic whips going, you know, make it faster! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Doug White, thank you very much uh, for appearing on this episode of Hack Naked News. Thanks, everyone, for listening and watching. We'll see you next time.